Qu'est-ce que la sécurité Je vais commencer par la définition provisée par le Sommet de la Food en 1996. La sécurité est atteinte quand tous les humains, à tous les moments, ont la capacité sociale, et économique de trouver pour eux une suffisante quantité de nourriture, both healthy and nourishing, allowing them to satisfy their needs and lead an active and healthy life. I'd like to uh, underline that the first man who addressed the matter of food safety was Thomas Malthus. In the 19th century, he introduced that to the question, the following question, what about the increase in the population versus the uh, availability of food? He said, populations are growing in an exponential way, whereas the quantity of food available is growing in a linear fashion. And he said, sooner or later, there will be a problem. And this is the reason why we started developing a more productive agriculture with more productive cultivars and also all kinds of uh, inputs such as uh, pest control, chemicals, insecticides by using uh, energetic products and fertilizers and irrigation to increase agricultural production substantially in the 20th century. So although the population had increased, the matter of uh, access to food was not a problem, except that increasing agricultural production with input caused a number of environmental issues because uh, the environment and the soils were damaged, contaminated, ecosystems were contaminated by biocides and um, aquatic environments became, were victims of eutrophication and uh, biodiversity was lost both in the natural environment and the agricultural environment. There was deforestation on the global level and um, water resources uh, were exhausted both above ground and underground. Now, the climate change's impact even made the situation more difficult. Temperatures increased, rain falls changed in different regions of the world, and we witnessed a greater number of extreme events, droughts, storms, strong winds, we can also mention desertification. 900 million people are suffering from desertification across the planet. And finally, we can also talk about saline water intrusion in the aquifers, especially along the coasts. What about the oceans? The about one billion people depend on the ocean for their livelihood because this is where they find food proteins. What are the consequences? Well, there's a trend towards excessive fishing. Temperatures increase in the um, ocean waters uh, in various regions across the world, leading to acidification of water. Acidification has an impact on corals, which constitute an essential habitat for fishes. And we also observe changes in the climate cycles, especially El Nino impacting migration uh, patterns uh, for some species, such as anchovies in Peru or salmons in British Columbia and Japan. But this has also brought about solutions that we're thinking about. We're still, we're always trying to find technological solutions by increasing inputs and production factors, such as um, GMOs, and GMOs are a controversial solution. There are also other solutions, such as the importance of local traditional knowledge, so that 
agriculture is more a locally centered agriculture, more respectful of the environment, and also urban agriculture closer to the population, and organic agriculture. Finally, we must think of all the information and data that we have available in order to make better decisions, plan agricultural production, and also make the necessary adjustments to adapt to climate changes. This leads to a number of new approaches. For instance, we have the slow food movement, which started in Italy in 1986 in response to uh, the uh, fast food uh, fashion. There is also the uh, increased connection between producers and consumers, the connection between towns and rural areas so that agriculture is closer to the local population than the urban population, the closed circuit agriculture fashion, and finally, preservation of uh, the soil, the water and the various resources. And finally, there is this new movement which started about 10 years ago in England called Transition Towns. Finally, we should not forget to mention women. Women are responsible for 80, 90 percent of agriculture in Africa and in Asia, and also for the processing of uh, agricultural products in Africa, but not only. Also, in some of our countries, so called developed countries, women uh, are in charge of uh, processing of. Uh, fishery-derived products, and women work in difficult conditions and are very vulnerable to occupational diseases. All of this has led us to changes in our eating fashions and uh, lifestyle. For instance, we must think of reducing our red meat consumption. We must think of the impact that the sushi fashion has had on some species such as tuna, and tuna is an endangered species. We must also think about eating uh, fruit or agricultural products during the right season in order to encourage local production. And finally, we must comply with the efficient catch quotas and uh, implement a more ecosystemic management uh, system in the uh, catchment areas.